Hello and welcome to Time to Talk with Nick Thompson. So today I'm going to be talking to Nick Thompson, who's also known as the Holistic Vet, who's based in Wiltshire. And um, we're going to talk to Nick about different things, mainly uh, being a Holistic Vet and what it means. And Nick's renowned for his seminars on things like um, epilepsy and hypothyroidism, but is really, really well known for his passion on raw feeding. So get yourself a cup of tea, sit back and enjoy watching and listening to Nick Thompson as he shares his passion on all things to do with holistic veterinary uh, medicine and raw feeding. Enjoy. Take care. Bye bye. So welcome, Nick. It's so good to see you. Um, the last time I saw you was in 2016 in Scotland. You came up and did a yeah. seminar on, it was on hypothyroidism and um, what else is it on? It was hypothyroidism, I think it was epilepsy as well. And Yeah, kind of, they're very tied, to, they're very linked. So uh, it, 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 you, you can't say, you can't talk about one without the other. So that's for sure. Really? It's yeah, so, very much so. It's so close to my heart because I had an epileptic dog for Ziggy. Uh, became epileptic and he was with us for two and a half year after okay yeah so it's yeah. been really close to my heart okay yeah i'm sorry to hear that oh it was it was tough i it's it's a hard thing to live with but um can i i sent you a list of questions earlier and there's something that i'm really interested in finding out because i was a holistic therapist and that's when i first came across to you were with yeah. uh is it mark ellis no. Mark Elliott. Mark, Mark Elliott down, down, down in Chichester. That's it, yeah. yeah. Uh, and that was through the Holistic Veterinary BH, BMA, British Holistic Veterinary Medicine. BAH, yes, uh, I think, wasn't it? Or was it the British Holistic Veterinary Medicine Association? British that Holistic. was a long time ago. Well, that's when I first came across you and wow, Mark, because I had one of my dogs down to see Mark and for homeopathy. And yeah. I taught him how to do muscle testing because I was a kinesiologist. Okay. And so we then yeah. talked about it and then I joined and then moved to New Zealand in 2003. And okay. so that's, that's how far back I know your name from. Gosh. That's, not, yeah, that's, you're talking, you're talking 20, 18 years, maybe yeah. 18 or so years ago. Yeah, it was the, the, British, I mean, the British holistic veterinary medicine association that was yes uh, wow amazing yeah those are the days i know amazing and then i come back from new zealand went to join and it had gone yes it had it was only up for about two years i think unfortunately so what made you move into holistic medicine rather than traditional veterinary medicine i'm always curious uh, what turns people away from you you know this is the the norm if yeah, you know, and then yeah. Kind of make some swing. Being a ther you know, complementary therapist myself for years, what yeah. pulled you away from it? Um, I think the major difference between the, the conventional approach and the holistic approach is the time. Is we spend a lot of time uh, talking to our our, our clients <clears throat> to to really try and understand them, to understand the patient, to understand the whole scenario. And so that was one reason was that I just found 10 minute, 15 minute consultation was very difficult to do good medicine in that time. So it's quite, it's, it's, it, it lends itself to prescriptive medicine and, 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 and that, that's not ideal. I think um, if you know that there are other ways of doing it, but what really, changed my mind was being in practice as a young vet and giving out antibiotics and steroids and non-steroidal anti-inflammatories and things like that thinking i never go to the doctor and and i would only take these medicines is if i absolutely have to mm -hmm. and so that, that 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 mindset made me think well 
you know, that's a bit hypocritical. If you're giving, giving medicines that you would avoid, you wouldn't, I wouldn't say that I wouldn't use them at all. Yeah. I have had an antibiotic in my adult life, but it's, it's kill or cure type scenario, not just, oh, I've got a sniffle and off we go. Um, so it was, it was that. But also I was raised. My dad uh, was a doctor. My mother was a nurse. And so just was raised in, the, in, in, in a very kind of medical and let's use as little drug as possible. My mum was really into homeopathy and nutrition, really into nutrition uh-huh. and, um, and aromatherapy and, and things like this. And, and dad did, did nutrition and acupuncture uh, and medicine. So it was kind of, kind of inevitable, really. Natural you know. That's awesome. Well, I've got a sister who used to be a nurse, and she was the first person to introduce me to homeopathy. Okay. It's, and it's really interesting. You think nurses are very traditional, but actually a lot of them are, are, are very... Uh, in the more complimentary side, they're very holistic, aren't they? They're looking at the whole yeah. thing rather than just a symptom. I, th- I think they are. I mean, we're all tra- we're all trained in the same way. The doctors and nurses and vets and vet nurses, we're all treated in the same way, in pattern recognition. And then uh, here is the standard treatment for that disease pattern. So, um, so... Uh, it's just that when you when you look at it from a holistic perspective, you say I was trained with this with this these tools, but I want to use all of these tools instead, mm-hmm. and I want to have a much deeper understanding of my patients and my clients, so as to really establish what it is that needs to be treated. You know, so that's 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 really how I come to holistic medicine. It's 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 lovely to really get to know clients and, and, and patients. And because if a dog is presented to you with an itch from a conventional point of view, it's very easy to get rid of that straight away with, you know, Cytopoint or with, with Apoquel or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. But what I like to do is I like to teach the owner. What are the reasons that the dog might be itchy? What can we do? What are the tests that we can do to maybe find out what's wrong? What, what what simple non-drug treatments can we bring to bear to treat that itchy dog or maybe it's a, it's a, a dog with a loose stool those because i'm doing so much raw food uh so many raw food consultations um i'm seeing lots of itchy dogs and lots of uh dogs with loose bowel problems ibd and colitis and things like this uh-huh. And I love treating them, but I, gut problems is one of my favorite things to, to treat. Or I see a lot of healthy dogs. People come along and they say, my dog's on a, on a raw food diet. I'd just like you to do an MOT on the dog and an, an MOT on the food. Fantastic. Off we go. It's brilliant. It's absolutely brilliant. And, and, and I really enjoy doing those because people come along and they're on raw food. And so they're really enthusiastic. They've they've seen the light and they've seen their dog is better and they're thinking well if i can get my dog looking that much better by just taking a pot shot at a raw food diet what you know let's go and talk to nick and see if we can go even further we can go take it to the ultimate extreme and so that's what we like to do really push those nutritional boundaries and we talk about vaccination, optimal, you know, minimal vaccination. And we talk about worming, minimal worming and minimal flea products and, and just le- leading a as healthy a life as possible with as little drug as possible. Yeah. That's, that's the bottom line, really. That's how we really like to approach things. Yeah. Because when, when I, you know, I'm a behaviourist now, but I've still got, um, when you're a kinesiologist, you're always a kinesiologist. It's always there, that, that level of um, sure. working within the triangle of health. And, uh, yeah. you, you know, that's just how you rock. And yeah, yeah. It, it is when you start looking at, you know, nutrition, environment, uh, behaviour, energy, yeah. the whole yeah. lot comes yeah. together, doesn't it? It is. Well, that's holism, isn't it? It's like yeah. you can't look at the behaviour without looking at the owner. You can't look at the owner without looking at the house. You can't look at the house and the owner without looking at the dog. You can't look at the dog without looking at the health of the dog. You can't look at the health of the dog without looking at the, health, the 
diet of the dog and the chemicals that go onto the dog. So there it is. It's the, that's why it's called holism, isn't it? You know? So do you know when you're doing like the nutritional consults? Um, yeah. I had, a, I had a few like really odd cases uh, years ago with dogs. And um, I can remember there was this one dog and it had a really, really itchy paws and couldn't figure it out. And we went, went through the diet and batch fair remedies and um in the end i was muscle testing and it was formaldehyde and it was like a really richly carpeted house and the dog was reacting oh. to the formaldehyde you know everything wow. was like really soft furnishings and so we had to strip the environment back lift the carpet soft, natural stuff um you know because it was just everything was luxurious in the house and the more luxurious the more formaldehyde and Things like, you know, pigs yeah. ears and so we just stripped everything back. Natural diet, natural environment. Yeah. Dog stop chewing its paws. That was amazing. Wow. That is brilliant. Well done, you. Thank you. I love stuff like that. It's so cool. That's a really good story. Yeah, it's good. So you so you said, uh, I think that might be formaldehyde in the carpets. You're going to have to take up £10,000 worth of carpets. <laughs> is that about the size of it? Pretty much. Um, I did, I did, you know, kinesiology muscle testing on the dog and we restricted, we lifted carpets in one room, restricted yeah. the dog to that one room and it was fine, so the whole lot come up. Okay. You know, people love it. You know, people like the dogs, they'll do anything. Exactly, yeah, yeah, it's a no-brainer. It's a no-brainer. So, yeah. It probably did them a lot of good as well, because formaldehyde, you don't want to be breathing that in the whole day, do you? Oh, it's dreadful, isn't it? And it's in everything. Yeah. You just have to be... Mm -hmm. Not so much yeah. now, but you know, 15, 20 years ago, it was in everything. Shock. Yeah, yeah, it's it's what they used to preserve bodies with, isn't it? Formaldehyde. Yeah, yeah the embalming, it's embalming, fluid. embalming fluid. Yeah, yeah. Because they still use it on some of the um, pigs' ears and stuff, don't they? To to preserve them, still use them as preservatives, I think. Oh, nothing. Not that I would touch. No, none no, of no, the, no, none of the, none of the good ones. None of the good ones. None of the good ones. No, the ones that are like orange and sweaty and yeah, not great. No. Mm, no, we don't so like is it that. primarily raw food um, consults that you're doing or do you still do homeopathy and acupuncture? I'm doing, yeah, thing? yeah. Technically, I'm doing homeopathy, acupuncture, nutrition and herbal medicine, four things. Okay, that's why I've got four circles is, is my logo. But what's happening ah. very organically the world and the dogs are, are, are pushing towards diet. That's that's the where we. That's where I feel I need to put my energy in teaching about raw food, in treating using raw food, um, and I'm really happy with that. I really enjoy it. Imagine I all I spend all day long speaking to really lovely people who care enough about the dog to think about changing the diet, to think about treating disease through diet. They've, they've, you know, sometimes they've, they've, they've tried everything with their vets and they're at their wits end. They don't know what to do. So they come along and we, we try diet and we can sometimes make some really lovely changes with, with gut and skin cases primarily. Many other things, you know, behavioral problems. Oh, all sorts of things can be can be helped by using uh, a great diet. You know, you are what you eat. That's what the 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 and, the, the old and there's, physician. There's, so, there's so much evidence now as well about um, the gut being the second brain and all of the oh, brain cells totally. the gut and you, you know the whole um, yeah. microbiome and the flora. I mean, we we go back years yeah. telling people to take probiotics. Very much so. And you know. Yeah, very much so. And there's a, there's a thing called the psychobiome now, where they're linking, they're actually linking very strongly the, the, the brain and the gut, the psychobiome. There's a book actually you can get from Amazon called The Psychobiome, which is very interesting. I'm going to write that down because I'm really yeah. interested in it. Um, you yeah. know, the, the gut is the second brain because, you know, the whole kinesiology side of it. And I know there's a really mm -hmm. good thing on YouTube. Um, yeah. I think it's an hour long and it's the second yeah. brain is what it's called. And yeah. that's really yeah. good. it talks about how they're finding um, brain cells in the lining of the gut. And yes. know, so it's like ancient people knew this because they would say, go with your gut instinct and you yeah. know, all the old sayings are kind of point yeah. that the ancients knew it. And 
as science to over, we kind of forgot all of this wonderful right. information and pushed it one side with, um, you know, all of this wonky research done by pharmaceuticals pushing us in the wrong direction. And, mm, mm, mm. Yeah, really interesting. Yeah, yeah. So what was that called again? I'm going to write it down. Psychobiome. I can't remember the uh, the author. He's from I think Bangor University. Uh, psychobiome. Yeah. Fantastic. I'll get that. Good stuff. Yeah. Very interesting stuff. That's awesome. So, what um, apart from skin conditions? Because I mean, I've spoken to you, epilepsy is something that's really close to my heart. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah. And I had my dog on a raw diet as well. Yeah. Yeah. At the time I'm a, a, an avid raw feeder, and so. Would raw, I, th I think what I'm trying to say is if he wasn't on a raw diet, if he was on, say, for example, kibble, would yep. that, that would have had a detrimental effect on his energy system. So that would have had a detrimental effect potentially on the epilepsy as well. Possibly. What we can very much so, very much say about, about epilepsy in, in dogs, because in children, for example, they will use, they will put children onto a ketogenic diet to treat refractory epilepsy. Yeah, this is well known and well documented. Yep, you, 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 you put, and, so, and, a, and a, a ketogenic diet is a diet which is uh, where, where uh, most of the calories are from fat, mm -hmm. moderate levels of protein, and very low levels of carbs, which is yeah. obviously the opposite of kibble which is loads of carbs and, mo and, and low levels of protein and fat, only you know, adequate levels of protein and fat. So uh, by doing that, you can have some really beneficial effects. Um, it can be very uh, useful uh, in the, to support cancer patients and also for, for epilepsy patients. There's a uh, a, a group in Texas in the States called the Keto Pet Sanctuary, where they're actively doing this right now. The Keto Pet Sanctuary. If everyone wants to have a look at that or maybe put a link into the Keto Pet Sanctuary, they're doing some amazing, amazing work there. And I do, whenever I see a, 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 a cancer patient, I will always discuss with them about the ketogenic diet because that's great my son did the ketogenic diet for a little while um ah, I know. Yes. yeah he he moved to scotland a few years ago and he completely changed his lifestyle and um yeah went on the ketogenic diet but he found he lost too much weight and he was trying to to build muscle build build bulk um, yeah. and he just is like a really well uh, healthy balanced diet you know really good okay late portions and um but he did the ketogenic diet for a while, so I found out quite a bit about it then. Yeah, um, yeah, it's also yeah, really yeah. Plant inflammatory diseases, isn't it? To go Very much so, through, yeah. Um, the ketogenic, is it? I can't remember. Uh, Peterson, he, he's a real. Uh, he wrote. I can't remember what, what his name now is. It's not Roger Peterson. Um, Jordan Peterson, it might be. Uh, he's a real. Uh, proponent of the ketogenic diet and inflammatory diseases as well okay right right i think it's just very good very it's very good for for, for 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 most most disease processes it means you're very very sharp if you can get the balance right it's good for for uh for um good toning of the body it's anti-cancer you know uh it's it's uh it's, it's a very powerful way to 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 eat but it takes it takes quite a lot of work to get it right. Yeah, a lot of work for, for people, for dogs, less so. And and if you look on the keto the keto pet sanctuary, uh, they have on that on that website they have a kind of a a, a, a guide as to how you do the diet. God, that's the I will definitely so people, put a link on. Um, I'll, 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 Work, edit, and so I'll put a link up for everybody. Yeah, that's yeah. Great. And so, um, how what other kind of things do you deal with other than skin, uh, runny poos, you know, and epilepsy with 
with the natural uh, diet? What is else do I deal with? Is it everything? Is it? I do. Yeah, pretty much everything. But mainly, uh, what because what happens is if you if you have some success with a dog with who's had bad gut for years and years, they then tell their their friends and their family, and so one or two bad gut cases they come and see you and then they tell their friends and their family and suddenly you're seeing loads and loads and loads of 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 dogs with gut problems and there are loads of them about you know i think most i say i, I say to many people okay what's the what's the average poo score for your for your dog if 10 is a perfect torpedo yeah it's a it's it's a poo that you can pick up with two fingers if that's a 10 and if if zero is oxtail soup, <laughs> what, what, what score is your dog? And most people will say, oh, uh, they're eating kibble and they're, they're about seven. And that's fine. That's how they are the whole time. I, I say to, to them, you are 30% off the mark. Yeah. Because, yeah, you should be a 10 out of 10. A really great, perfect poo, which indicates good gut function, good microbiome. And if you're producing sevens all the time, it means the diet is 30% wrong. Imagine driving a car that was 30, where the engine was 30% broken. It's a no-go. It's a no-go scenario. So there's a lot of people out there, and I reckon the average dog is about a seven or an eight, yeah. which means that their the diet is okay, but it's not absolutely perfect. And you know what, Les? It's so simple to change the diet to a really good raw or fresh diet. Super, super easy and fun and safe and fantastic. So I, I'm a strong, strong advocate for it because you've got to feed the dog something, so why not feed it great food to make it better with yeah. every mouthful? You know, it, it, it's, it, it's wonderful. It goes everywhere, doesn't it? So it's like, it cuts down on your vet bills, so therefore your insurance is, is less, you have a better quality of time with your dog, your dog's healthy, it's farts don't smell, it's teeth are lovely and clean. Yep, it's yep. It smell, it's coat shiny, poos yep. are easy to pick up. Yep. It's like it's, it yep. ripples everywhere, doesn't it? It's, it's, it's transformative. It's utterly, utterly transformative. And I think most people who, who do it come to me and then uh, you know a year down the line and go oh why didn't i do this 10 years ago 20 years ago you know um yeah. it's it's a, a lot of people are kicking themselves because they didn't look into it uh way way before way before why are traditional vets so against it i was speaking with somebody today they phoned me up for they wanted me to do a behavior report and yeah. um, we started talking about food and she's feeding cold press and says, well, why not raw? And she said, well, uh -huh. my best says, you, you know, there's been so many dogs, there's an increase on raw feeding and there's an increase on same dogs, a couple of actors. And it's like, well, really? You, you, yeah, no, I don't. Is yeah. Vet, I think, vet, vet yeah, I think the vets are scared of it. They don't really know. They're not taught about it at school. And so they don't know. Uh, they don't know as much about it as they do hmm. about the kibble because they get a, a rep from the food company coming in every three months telling them about how great the, the, the food is, okay? And it's what they're used to, and, and, and they got free food when they were students, and, you know, it, it, so they're, they're just thick as thieves with the, with the food companies, and that they don't know any difference. The truth of the matter is that there are pros and cons to raw food. There are pros and cons to kibble, and the grown-up, for me, the grown-up conversation is to look at the pros and cons of kibble and the pros and cons of raw and see what suits you best. And as far as I'm concerned, after 28 years in the business, raw food beats kibble hands down. It does. Or fresh. You know, if you don't want to, if you don't want to feed it, it raw, just lightly cook it. You know, take some advice and just get it right. It's very easy, and you lightly cook it, and off you go. Uh, I don't think there's a good excuse for feeding kibble food, yeah. even in a in a COVID crisis. And and people are concerned that it costs more. And we did. We sat down years ago and did a spreadsheet, and we put down like the main the main um, kibble manufacturers. You know, we put them all down, listed them all up, and then we did mm. the main raw feeders as well. Uh, yeah, the main manufacturers and. It came out 
level pegging. Maybe it's two pounds a week more. We couldn't believe it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not, not, not a lot of difference. I think you know there are very, there are very expensive raw foods. There are very expensive kibbles, and so if you look at all of them, I think that that probably is about right. I was lecturing up in Bradford uh, a um, month or so ago, and one of the girls there was it was a spreadsheet geek, and she had got feeding her. Uh, what were they springers or something maybe even bigger they were like th maybe even 30 kilos she she'd because she buys in bulk and she's got a freezer and everything else she mm -hmm. got she could at a push get the price of the food down to 17p per day obviously right. she she wouldn't do that 17p she she could drop it you know using really cheap tripe and uh and then a fast day or something like that she mm -hmm. could so i think the excuse that it's expensive is is not always valid if you if what well, you know after you the best thing to do is to start with the with um the frozen uh complete roars that you can get from honeys or from from paleo or from natural instinct or nature's menu or whoever it is get them to do it for the first few months find your feet and then you can think about doing it yourself um uh you know if you want to take advice from a, holi a, a holistic vet uh, not even me i you know I, i'm not trying to drum up business i'm just saying you know when you learn to drive a car you had a driving instructor just get a food instructor for just for for the first month or so or or if you can find somebody who's uh, 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 who's been feeding for a long time then that would be that's that's the way to start start with some instruction is a good idea. That's perfect. And I'm looking, I keep, my eyes keep going down with the clock and I'm conscious of the time for you, right? So I think that's a really perfect place to um, end our chat. Nick, it's been so cool talking to you. And I'm, once this is all over and we're out of lockdown, yeah. I'll be getting you up yeah. to Scotland uh, to do another talk. Cause I'd love to, Les. I just, I'm so happy to talk about raw food uh or and health and just simple holistic holistic message you know we can talk about hypothyroidism we can talk about all these things um i'd be happy to have a chat with you again in a in a, in a month or two if you'd like to sit down um yes. be really really happy to do that really happy just I you know loads of questions you know homeopathy epilepsy alabama <laughs> rot, hypothyroidism you know just the whole how you approach all of these things from a natural perspective, you know, no sure. sledgehammers and walnuts, you know. So. Let's let's do it again in a, in a in a in a in a month or two. Yeah, be great. No, that's great, Nick. Thank you, and thank you so thank much. You. Thank you for your support, and uh, anything we can do to help you, uh, I'd be more than happy to do that. Keep well and uh, and, and be safe. And you, and you, you take care, Nick. Take care. Thank you, Les. All the very best to you. Thank you. Thank you.